looking for the tomb of Genghis Khan, you know, exploring the unwrapped unmapped regions of China and like Guatemala. Like, where does your experience in Namibia with Will Smith rank among all of those? Cops. I mean, it was incredible, right? It was, it was, I mean, all of those, I should say all of those are incredible, right? Yeah. Uh, but a lot of those other expeditions were, you know, just myself and a small crew running around the deepest parts of the jungle getting lost, looking for these worlds that are hidden in the depths of all these things. This one was like that, but I happen to have like one of my childhood heroes and lifetime, you know, superstars uh, right next to me the whole time being like a buddy. It felt like I was on this road trip with one of my best friends, but I happen to have like the world's best cinematographers all around us the whole time filming it all. So. And that best friend happened to be this guy named Will Smith. So it was, I mean, that was like, what? What is going on? What is, like, is this real? <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's so funny that you, you say that. Cause like, I mean, like watching you guys go across the canyon. I mean, were you ever like, oh my God, if Will Smith falls, like it's going to be my fault and I'm going to freak out. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was a couple of moments. <laughs> there was a few moments like that because we couldn't, we had to, we had no idea what was going to be on the other end of that. We had to only get there by sending a drone across with this little yeah. thin guy line and then pull the rope around this massive boabab tree. So, the, you know, right when we started going across there, it was like, uh, is this going to work? And, and yeah, I mean, there was definitely that moment of like, um, what's going to happen here? But there was actually a moment when we were down in this cave about 400 feet down in this pitch black cave. And we started scuba diving into the, one of the world's largest subterranean lakes, which they really don't know where the bottom of this thing is. It's never been mapped because it's so deep. Oh, wow. And uh, and it's crystal clear water. So, and it, it's a little bit of altitude. So it's really hard to figure out your, your, you know, your depth in the water when you're scuba diving. And it's hard to figure out your buoyancy too. So I do remember at one point seeing Will start to descend in a way that I was like, uh-oh, what's going to happen? Are we ever going to see him again? Uh, and it switched from me being like, oh, is this is Will Smith, mega superstar, to being like, oh, this is just, like, this is a friend. This is now a friend. This is a human being in this incredibly intense place trying to survive. Uh, and when we got to the surface, I asked him, like, how did you stay calm? Because he didn't, he didn't descend into the bottom. He was able to compose himself and figure it out. And he was just telling me about his childhood, telling me about how, how his parents said never freak out about anything when they were, when he would take him to, his dad used to take him to work with him to do high powered electricity work. And, um, and his dad was like, you just never freak out any situation. And at that point, it wasn't Will Smith, the actor, it was just Will Smith, the person. And um, yeah, you know, like that was wild. That was an incredible bonding moment in the face of danger <laughs> yeah and i was gonna say you know as the season sort of like explorer you've done plenty of uh like expeditions like this like how do you prepare uh for something like this when you know it's going to be yourself but then also with somebody you're bringing along who doesn't know the ropes like you do who isn't used to being in environments like that like how do you mentally and physically prepare for something like that yeah it's tricky right um you know, because uh, you kind of want to like, like see if you can help take care of somebody in a situation like that. But when I, it, almost immediately when I met Will, it was like all the mental preparation sort of just evaporated and it was just like high fives and, you know, jokes the whole time. Um, he's just a really cool guy actually in person, right? So there's no, you know, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of barriers. He's actually incredibly humble, right? And and quite fearless. So in all these situations, uh, you know, I think for me, it's more about like letting the awe of what I'm about to experience put away the fear of any given moment. And I think that's the explorer in all of us. And I think that that is deeply seated in Will already. Otherwise, he wouldn't be doing a show like this. So really, you know, at the end of the day, it didn't feel like I was carrying him along. It felt like we were there together. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think that 
one of the reasons I loved your episode so much too was, uh, you know, this idea of, you had talked about this idea of like slowing down and, you know, with the technology you use, taking the pictures and sort of everything is kind of moving around us, but no one's noticing it. And so I was wondering, you know, with that, what do you hope people take away from your episode in Welcome to Earth? Uh, you know, that's a great uh, thing for asking that. You know, I, I've, I've had the really incredible experience in life of being able to see things through the lens of technology uh, that are actually happening all around us, but we just might not see because of, you know, how our brain works or how our eyes work or our senses. So, you know, when my early career, my early career started out using lasers and to kind of map through jungles or using satellites that can look at different signatures in, in the visual and non-visual spectrum. So we could look for lost cities and things like this, right? The same thing exists in the scales of time. And the world around us is this dynamic, magical place that's constantly changing. That might be the one single most important factor in my life, the realization that everything, is impermanent. Everything is changing. Everything is moving from the mountains to the waterfalls. And I think when you start to look at things in different time scales, you start to see and feel that, which is what this show really does. You get to feel things almost, right? Uh, you, I think you start to realize just how special any given moment is and to try to not take that for granted, right? I think while I was with Will, one of the most present conversation we kept on having was about being present and about appreciating those individual moments. And, you know, I think if the viewer walks away from watching this, having an inspiration in not only this incredible planet that we're on, but also the moment that we're experiencing on this planet, then they'll experience what I felt. Yeah. And I think that was what was so cool about the the photos you were taking and stuff like that and all of this technology. And I was I was reading about some of the technology that you incorporate into your um, expeditions. And I, I'll be honest, I didn't un understand a lot of it because a lot of it sounded really advanced. But, you know, I think it's so interesting how it broadens the scope of what you can do out there. So that was that always kind of your uh, thing was to like bring out this technology to kind of widen the lens of what we're seeing? Well, I guess so. I mean, I, I ended up getting um, a, a couple of degrees in engineering. So I started out as an engineer just because I like tinkering with things. I always love tinkering with things, right? And I learned more and more that engineering and technology really, it's all part of our human imagination. We come up with this stuff and then we are able to see or explore the world in new lenses given this these advances, these tools, right? But it starts with curiosity. What is it that you really want to see anyway? So it doesn't really matter about the technology. The technology is going to become obsolete and then, you know, faster and faster every single year. And you're going to get new technology. But what keeps me going is that like core question of what's out there. Uh, and I think that's the explorer in us. You know, I learned halfway through my career that National Geographic was founded by one of the most iconic engineers of our time or of in history, this guy named Alexander Graham Bell who invented the telephone, right? So it founded in part by him and a couple other folks, but that just tells you that technology and engineering have been a part of exploration through history. They allow us to go over barriers, to look beyond, but we have to know why we're going beyond. We have to know what we're looking for in the first place. And that I think is really at the heart of it all for me. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I think, that really sh shined through in your episode. And I really appreciated that. Um, but like, I was also wondering, you know, because they're, they're short, they're like 35 minutes, I think. Was there anything like super cool, super interesting that happened while you guys were out there that just like didn't make the cut that you like were like, dang, like I really wish that was in it. You know, I didn't even see the cut yet. I haven't even seen the oh. whole thing. You, you've seen it and I haven't even seen it. I'm, I'm jealous. You gotta well, tell me what it's like. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I they, you know, we've been making it and, and I see every, yeah, you see all the little bits of it. I haven't seen the final edit, but I feel like, you know, there is definitely some moments that I know were behind the scenes. Right? Like when I remember I showed up to the set one time, not to the set, it's not even the set, it's the world, right? But I showed up and i have forgotten it was it was we were doing really intense days. We're talking about like before dawn to sun, past sunset every single day in these extreme locations. And I forgot to shave one day 
And I was like, oh, what am I going to do? And Will, Will hands me his razor because he's shaving right there too. So we're like, we're shaving together with his shared razor in the back of this truck. So yeah, this is happening right now with Will Smith. I'm shaving with a shared razor behind this truck in the middle of the deserts in Namibia. I don't think that made the cut, but that was. <laughs> yeah, that, it definitely did it. That's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I almost wish it did. <laughs> um, but I've got, I've got one more question before I go, you know, just hypothetically speaking, welcome to earth gets a season two. Will Smith's come back. Will Smith comes back. Where would you take him? What would you show him? Would you push him further? Where do you want to go next? Oh, you know, the world's wide open. Uh, let's go to, let's go, let's go beyond. Let's go to the moon. No, I'm just kidding. I think, um, you know, if the, I, it feels like there's another adventure to be had around every single door. Uh, and I think at this point, it's like, Will has shown that he's an explorer and he's ready to go. So maybe we'd have to ask him, where does he want to go next? Because he's got it in him. He's it's like, he's, he's a natural born explorer. And that's something I learned on this show. It's an incredible experience when you actually watch it and when you actually see people do this because you actually feel like you're there with them. And I think that's because Will himself is, is he's channeling the inner explorer in all of us. I mean, it's the most accessible thing you can, you can do is, is put yourself out of your comfort zone and go and try to be like completely open-hearted in a place that you've never been. Um, and I hope that everybody that watches this feels that and then they go out and then make their own season two in other parts of the world, you know, like make their own adventures as well. Because I think the more that we appreciate how magical this planet is, you know, the more we'll appreciate our role and responsibility on this planet. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it definitely inspired me to want to go out and do more exploring. I, I did some stuff over the summer, but you know, I'm like, I want to, I'm ready for more now. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll but, see you uh, up there again. <laughs> yeah. but thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Um, and I'm really excited for Welcome to Earth to come out and for everybody else to see it. So thank you yeah, so much. Anyway. Have Thanks a good so one. Much. I can't wait to watch the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.